Hello, I'm Maggie Jess, Director of Nursing at Ameristaff Nursing Services, and welcome to another episode of Boomer Health at Home. On today's show, we will learn everything you need to know about assisted living facilities. Joining us today is Carla Hicks, Nurse and Executive Director at Manoogie Manor. Hello, Carla. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So, Carla, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became the Executive Director at Manoogie Manor. Um, well, my background is nursing. Um, it's hard for me to believe, but I've been a nurse now for 25 years. I'm saying that. Um, <laughs> seems like I just graduated yesterday, uh, but it's been a while. The majority of my nursing career has been at uh, Beaumont Royal Oak. Um, I started working at Manoogian Manor back in September of 2021 as the executive director. And um, I've been there, um, been there since. And um, I love what I do at the manor, the care of the residents. And um, I really feel like uh, nursing is what I was meant to do. And uh, my nursing background um, helps me to take good care of our residents at the manor. Okay. So Manoogian Manor is an assisted living facility, is that correct? Yes. So what is that by definition? So assisted living um, by definition um, is providing personalized care um, to primarily seniors um, who come to us and um, their care is individualized. Um, we promote their independence. The thing I like about the assisted living um, uh, facility is that um, it promotes a sense of purpose for our residents and also promotes their independence. And so what we strive for is, um, is having them have quality of life with a variety of activities at the manor, um, socialization with other residents at the manor. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice environment uh, for someone who needs 24-7 um, care um, but yet they still are pretty independent. So we personalize their care at Manoogian Manor. Oh, wonderful. So they're kind of autonomous in some of their care. Yes. Okay. So this kind of leads to my next question. What would then be the difference between, you hear the thing, uh, they say nursing homes, skilled nursing homes, and then assisted living. What's the difference in all three? The, the main difference between assisted living and long-term care is long-term care um, is primarily for seniors or individuals um, that need have more medical needs. And your assisted living facility is where you, uh, our residents, they need care and supervision, um, but they're medically stable. Uh, nursing home or skilled um, nursing, there are more medical needs um, than we would able, be able to accommodate at Manoogian Manor. There are times when um, someone will go to a long-term care facility, say after surgery or after a hospitalization, um, and then they go for rehab to recover, but then the family will start looking for an assisted living facility um, to bring their loved one to because for their personal safety, they want that around the clock care for them. Okay. Supervision. All right. So some of the benefits then would be supervision, autonomy. Do you have any others? Um, well, a lot of activities. Uh, we do promote um, um, socialization for our uh, residents because we want them to still um, maintain independence, but also have that those socialization with other residents. Okay. Uh, so we do promote that. We want them to feel um, at home at Manoogian Manor, and we also want them to, um, frankly speaking, feel loved and cared for. So when they come to Manoogian Manor, uh, we embrace them and consider them part of our family. Oh, that's wonderful. So then on that end, what type of training do your staff have to take care of those specific needs? So the training that we have at Manoogian Manor consists of um, when we onboard new staff um, and even our current staff, we have in-services um, on a monthly basis. We do didactic classes and we also um, have dedicated preceptors. The most important thing um, training allows us to do is our, for our caregivers to get to know our residents. That's extremely important. Um, what are their likes? What are their dislikes? 
Um, and what can we do? I always think of the self-care deficit. What is the self-care deficit and what does that resident need for us to do for them? And so we approach it that way. We also have training for um, approaches to dementia. Um, we have basic life support training, life fire safety training. Um, so we do a lot of training with our staff because we want them to um, one, be well trained in how to care for our residents, but two, um, we want them to feel empowered if they're in a situation and if they're not sure what to do, you, there's always someone else that they can ask a question to or so that they feel supported in their uh, role as a caregiver. Okay. It sounds like you cover a broad spectrum of care, but then also individualize it to your patient. We do. Uh, yes, we do. That's great. Okay. So do you have staff on site 24-7? We do. We have uh, s staff around the clock, so we are 24-7 okay. care Okay. Um, and monitoring the safety of our residents. We have a dedicated uh, shift supervisor on every shift. Okay. Um, there's two nurses. There's myself and then there is um, a resident care manager who's also a nurse. Okay. Is there nursing staff at night? We, um, there's not a nurse at night, but there is a shift supervisor okay. um, on staff. And then do you have physician oversight? How does that work? Do you have a physician? We do. We actually have two visiting physicians. Okay. Um, now our residents can have um, their primary care physician who they have a relationship with. What I like about our visiting physicians at Manoogian Manor is that if I, if I need something, I can call them right away um, and I get a response um, if there's a resident that needs something. So we, I like the partnership that we have with our physicians in the care of our residents. Good, that's wonderful. Continuity of care is always yes. key, especially with the elderly. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so back to assisted living facilities, I know with home cares, and they talked a lot about nursing homes and regulations these past couple of years with the healthcare environment that's been going on. Are assisted living facilities, excuse me, regulated? We are regulated. We are licensed by the state of Michigan, and we have um, an annual survey, um, and the state of Michigan will come in uh, unannounced. Um, yeah. So they just pop in and, <laughs> and, and when they come, um, they're looking at certain things. They want to know um, what are, they'll look at our care plans for our residents, they'll look at our staffing uh, model, they'll look at our assignment sheets. Um, and I always welcome um, our surveyor because what they're going to do is help us to drive that quality of care. And so that's extremely important. So I always embrace when they come in and um, they're going to do the survey, but if they see opportunities, it, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, for us to improve. Um, but they are—they do survey us, and they will um, renew our licensing once a year. Okay, and that's through the state. It is through the state of Michigan. Okay. Um, and then uh, accreditations. Are there any specific accreditations that you need for an assisted living, or s anything that, like you as the director, want? that you could promote? Yeah, so our, our state licensing is our form of an accreditation at assisted living. Okay. So different healthcare settings have different regulations um, and may get different accreditations, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, but for Manoogian, our accreditation is our annual survey by the state of Michigan. Okay. Um, with the state, now I'm gonna ask you about insurance. Does insurance cover this at all with assisted living? Yeah, we, um, Munugia Manor is a private pay, so it is not covered by insurance. Okay. Um, however, there are often times when residents are eligible for benefits, um, and we always encourage our families to apply for those benefits. And some examples of that is um, through veterans. So if we, and we do have several veterans at our facility, and um, they um, qualify for veterans benefits, but the family would have to apply to determine eligibility. We also work with the Information Center, um, which is um, a Medicaid waiver program, okay. um, and it does um, provide sometimes um, um, savings to the resident 
but the family again would have to apply for those benefits. Okay. Uh, what about any of your residents that have Medicare? Does that apply to if they have a specific benefit? And what would that benefit be? So if you know? a resident has um, Medicare, which um, the majority uh, do, then that covers some of the physical therapy, occupational therapy that we have on site and some nursing services, but it does not cover um, the cost of, of their personalized care at Manugian Manor. Okay. You had mentioned earlier about physicians and the good rapport you have to keep up with the continuity of care. Are they allowed to come in and see the patient? Absolutely, we want them oh, to okay. come and see the, uh, see the um, resident. So we, um, our visiting physicians come in on a regular basis to, to see our residents and they have a good relationship with them. They really get to know our residents. It's one of the things that I like about having them on site um, and visiting. One of our physicians also has a nurse practitioner that will come in on the weekend to see our residents. Um, so it works out really well for us and for our residents um, who need, you know, who may need something or may need care. And they also fill out forms for our families if they need it. Oh, that's wonderful. Good. Kind of like a one-stop shop. Yes. That's wonderful. Uh, when it comes to rehabilitation, let's say one of your residents uh, needed to go to the hospital, came back and was weak. Do you have rehabilitation at Manugian Manor? We, we do have physical therapy and occupational um, therapy services at Manugian. Uh, we are not um, a skilled nursing or subacute rehab. So okay. if, a resident, um, if a resident went to the hospital and needed more aggressive physical therapy, then we would, um, they would go to a skilled rehab and then return to Manugian once they return back to um, their baseline or optimal level of functioning. We would continue their therapy at Manugian, mm -hmm. but sometimes they need that more aggressive physical therapy. Okay. Like mm -hmm. five days a week, sometimes six days a week, um, a couple times a day versus um, what we would offer at Manugian. Okay. So if they needed about three times a week, they could come back Absolutely. to Manugian. Okay. And does their physician assess that? Do you kind of take that as well? Is that something that you... Uh, review upon coming back if we, they've been at the hospital or anything like yes, that? Yes, we do. So anytime a resident uh, goes out to the hospital, mm -hmm. I will visit them in the hospital and then prior to discharge, um, I will collaborate with the discharge planner, okay. um, go do an assessment to see um, has this resident returned back to baseline? Are okay. we able to meet their needs when they come back from the hospital? Okay. And so it's a discussion that we'll have with the discharge planner. Okay, wonderful. All right, so now we're under residence. The best part. Yes. <laughs> um, tell us about your residence. Uh, what kind of profile of a resident do you look for? Is there something specific you guys have at an assisted living that you're looking for? So when we do assessments to see if um, a resident is appropriate for our community, um, the one thing that is important is that we are able to meet their needs. And so I don't, there's no two residents that are the same. And that's a, a, another thing that I love about our residents and their, and their families. Um, they're just at different stages. One of the things that we look for though in bringing a resident to Manugian is, um, are they, a, are they mobile? Are they able to um, transfer by, by themselves? Are they able to use a walker or some type of assisted device to uh, move about the manor freely? Um, because we are licensed by the state, there's certain things that we're not able to have. So you will see in your uh, skilled nursing facilities like Hoyer lifts where someone's not, they need a Hoyer to actually get out of the bed. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we could have at Manugian, so we do look at those types of things um, when we're moving a resident in. Are we able to meet their needs? Okay, so you also have specific guidelines. Yes. Okay. As an assisted facility, is there a room and or bed capacity guideline, or is that just based on the size? Yeah, well, we are, um, our facility is licensed by the state for 65 beds. Okay. Oh, wow. That's, that's a good amount of beds. <laughs> okay, great. And then uh, 
You said you always have nurse at, nurses on staff during the day, correct? Yes. Um, and what is a good kind of staff to resident ratio? Um, so our staffing model is more team-based. Okay. We have a dedicated shift supervisor on every shift. Um, we have um, we have caregivers who do medication management. We work very closely with our pharmacy and we have um, caregivers on staff around the clock. So it's not primary care, it's more of a team-based model and generally we'll have um, four team members on the day shift, um, afternoon shift with a dedicated supervisor and then we also have a supervisor at night um, uh, for the night shift. And then um, myself and Melanie, um, we're always, I say, we're always on call. Mm -hmm. um, so if um, the staff know if they need something, um, how to reach us. Okay. Um, so how do you welcome a new resident? Um, I, so it's, uh, this is interesting because we just welcomed uh, a new resident not that long ago. And um, I always try to create a lot of enthusiasm when we bring a new resident in and um, I took the residents to the lobby with all of our caregivers and uh, we had um, we had balloons and we had some songs and we try not to be overwhelming mm -hmm. um, but I do want them to feel very welcomed at Manoogian Manor. Um, we introduce them to our care team, uh, we introduce them to our leadership team, um, and we always encourage our families to visit initially, because the reality is, is that when someone comes to an assisted living facility, it's a big decision and a big transition for them. And so what we don't want is them to isolate and feel alone. We really want to engage them um, in activities uh, for socializing with other residents. Um, but we do roll out the red carpet for them when they come to Manoogian Manor. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good to know. You feel loved. You, I, that's the most important thing. We want them to feel loved and we want them to feel cared for. That's great. So now I'm going to ask about the food. Everybody always asks about the, the food. food. Everywhere and anywhere. In a hospital, you'll hear someone say, well, the food was really good, or oh, I hated the food, get me out of here. Uh, yeah. So what type of meal plans do you offer? Do you allow your residents to eat in their rooms, or can they go to the cafeteria? Do you have a cafeteria? What do you call it? Am I talking out of turn? Yeah, and no, we, well, we do have a dining room. Okay. Uh, and I encourage the, um, the residents to eat in the dining room. Again, it goes back to those socialization skills uh, for them because uh, we don't want them to isolate um, in their room. So um, our cooks are phenomenal. They make a lot of different dishes. Um, we have um, Armenian dishes, Italian dishes. We have American dishes. So there's a wide uh, variety of food. If there's a resident that doesn't like what's on the menu, we always have alternatives um, for them. So we have um, homemade soups, um, of course, the deli sandwiches. Um, so we try to make sure that we're given the resident food that they actually like. And I can't say that um, our residents complain about the food. It's, you know, they, um, they enjoy the food at Manoogian. And, we have to be sensitive to, to those who have special diets. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have residents that are on mechanical soft or uh, maybe they're on a pureed diet and we do accommodate those, um, those diets. As far as a resident eating in their room, again, we try to encourage them to come to the dining room. If someone was adamant that they wanted to eat in their room, I would certainly allow them to do that. Okay. Um, well, you know, good. it's, yeah. I, I wouldn't want it, I wouldn't promote it or encourage it for every day, mm -hmm. but every once in a while, it's like, I just want to stay in my pajamas and this is their home, like right. this is their home. So if I wanted to eat breakfast in bed, then I want them to eat breakfast in bed. Mm -hmm. We just take the food to them. Yeah. I, I've noticed when I just started conversing with you and doing this interview, I was calling them patients because that's what I'm used to. They're not the residents. So it took me a long time, Maggie, to figure <laughs> that out. Yeah. So because of my nursing background, for a long time I called them patients. Mm -hmm. So 
um, I did the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, you get used to it, I yes. guess, right? I, I think the difference, too, is um, in the hospital setting, um, our patients, we see them um, during their hospital stay, and then they leave and they go home. With our residents, like this this is their home. Mm -hmm. So we really get to nurture the relationships that we have with our residents and our families because we see them every day. Yeah, you're with them. All That's the wonderful. time. That's great. So you had mentioned too, to get that socialization, you guys do a lot of activities. What are the, some, of, some of the activities that Manuki Manor offers? Um, there's a wide variety of activities. We have a life enrichment director who plans uh, the activities for our residents. Um, and we, um, we have activities at the manor and we also have uh, off-site activities. Um, last year we went to a tiger game, took them to a tiger game. A lot of our families joined us. Uh, we went to um, a couple outings to Big Boy's Restaurant. Uh, we go to concerts in the park. We do, um, the, there's a library that also has um, music and, and concerts in the library. Um, it's just meaningful for the residents. And I don't know what it is about the dollar store, but our residents love going <laughs> out to the dollar store. It's one of, it's one of their favorites. And so our life enrichment uh, director will take a couple of trips to the dollar store. Um, the other thing that we did uh, last year was we had a car show. Um, we have some of our veterans and then we have um, residents that have worked um, at Chrysler's or Ford's or GM. And so having that car show and having them go out to see the old cars, they just light up and it's so, it's just refreshing when you see it. And then their families are invited um, to come out. It was one of the, um, in my humble opinion, one of the best events last year, just seeing the interaction with the residents and the car owners and their families. And um, we, of course, have like a big picnic for them. Oh, that's so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, they really enjoyed it. Some of the residents still talk about it and wondering if we're going to have it this year. Oh, yeah. So I assume you're going to have it. Of course. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's so cool. So when you change up activities, is that by some intake or communication from the residents? Do they kind of play a role in any of the change up that you guys have, like in menus or activities or anything that kind of goes on at Manugan? Yes, absolutely. We do have a resident council meeting once a month and this is an opportunity for our residents to really um, share their thoughts and ideals on um, maybe they like something and they want that more often or maybe they don't like something um, the reason we have a wide variety of activities is um, for residents who suffer from dementia, we're not able to cure that. However, we can prevent further decline by engaging them in meaningful activities. And so some of our activities are geared um, to, towards those who suffer from dementia. Um, but not everybody wants to participate in those types of activities. And so right. at the resident council meeting, um, it gives our residents um, the opportunity for us to hear their voice. What do you like? What do you not like? What would you like to have come if there was an activity that would make you happy? Tell us what that is. And then we, we, the life enrichment director will uh, look at those activities and, um, and bring them to the manor. Um, and then I have tea with the residents um, once a month. Um, it's I call it my sacred time with them. I, it's one of the my most favorite things that I do at Manugian because I have the opportunity to just be present with them and um, listen to what if they have any concerns or if it's just chit chat. And I love hearing about their history. Um, a lot of times they'll tell me where they grew up, where they went to school. Um, and it's, it's just really a nice time to um, really just be present with their residents. Yeah, and you get to know them on a different level. You do, yes. That's wonderful. Do you also have, kind of like you were saying, the resident council, um, family involvement? Or is a family allowed to come to those? Do you have different meetings um, for family? Are they, how involved can they be? 
the families can, the families don't typically come to the council meeting or to the teas, um, but we but we communicate with our families and uh, families will um, come into the manor and they will if there is a concern they'll share it with us me or the resident care manager. Um, and it, you know, if there's a concern, we, we take it seriously and we follow up appropriately and timely. Um, but the, our families are what I consider our partners in care. So um, we look to them, especially if a new resident is moving in, they provide substantial advisory support to us on the care of their loved one. Um, so those relationships with our family is extremely important. Wow, that's wonderful. It's yeah, good we to want, know. Yeah, thank you. And we want that. We want our families to be involved. Yeah. So, Carla, tell me what sets Manugan Manor apart from the array of other facilities that are in the southeastern Michigan area. Well, the number one thing that sets Manugan Manor apart is that we are not corporate care. Um, so Manugan is. Um, it's a smaller facility. Um, we do provide individualized care to our residents. Um, uh, our culture of caring, um, our culture of safety, um, our culture and relationships with our families and our residents is really what sets us aside. We are not um, a corporate care enterprise. Wonderful, okay, great. So if our residents have any questions, or concerns or just want to call uh, where can they reach you um, our resident my resident the residents the, the, yes, yes. Me, or family members excuse um, me the, <laughs> so all of the family members have my um, cell phone number um, and they know where my office is quite often like I'll get a resident that will come down and you know they'll um, ask me about something but and I'm always in the community so um, residents always see me out in the community, in the dining room, um, you know, in the, um, just out in the community at Manugia Manor. But all of, all of the families have my cell phone number if they needed to reach me for, for anything. Perfect. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank and then you. for anybody watching the show, um, where can they get any information about Manugia Manor? So, um, we do have a website. Um, so you, um, can uh, look up Man assisted living Manugian Manor in Livonia. Um, they can also call the manor. The phone number to the manor is 734-522-5780. Um, um, and they can come in and do a tour of our facility. Um, I'm happy to show families around um, and take them on a tour. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, oh, Carla. This has been wonderful. Having, they, I got to talk about Manugian Manor. Thank you for having me. Thank that you. That was great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Boomer Health at Home. I'm Maggie Jess, Director of Nursing for Ameristaff Nursing Services. And if you'd like more information on today's show, please call us at 248-288-2270. And as always, stay safe and healthy. Mm -hmm.